Welcome to Black Onyx Alternative Investments, where we bring you face-to-face -face with South Africa's most talented boutique asset managers and industry stakeholders. Why do we do this? Because we believe that you, the investor, deserve to be better informed so as to achieve the best risk-adjusted returns. Today I'm introducing you to Eric Null from Terebinth Capital. He runs the Terebinth Fixed Income Macro Hedge Fund, established in 2013. Eric, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to learning more about you and the firm. Start us off, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into alternative investments. So the bit about myself is um, I'm a country boy. I uh, grew up in the Klankaroo, Oatsorn to be specific, and uh, had no exposure to the markets growing up. Um, moved to Cape Town directly after school, had to find a way to make a living. And in my first three years in Cape Town, I worked at an import and export company where the person that I worked for came from a pretty privileged Afrikaans background. And part of his day-to-day uh, -day living involved trading equities for himself. So that was my first exposure to the market. It was um, an intriguing way to make money, so I tried to learn a bit, a bit more about it. And these were the, the cowboy days when I think you had five or seven days to, to settle trades and you could actually trade more than you had cash in your account. So it was really my, my first introduction to, to leverage also. Um, um, I then moved to London for four years where I worked at an oil company and after doing some accounting work in the firm, um, I had the opportunity to move on to the oil desk or the, the, the trading floor really there. It's an upstream oil company. I came back to South Africa actively looking for a, a position in the financial markets and specifically if I could in the fund management industry. I put my CV out and was uh, very fortunate to get a position at Coronation Capital which started off as a, a very, very junior position. I was prepared to do anything um, and eventually sent me to Dublin for a few months where um, I was very, very lucky to spend some time with David Barnes, one of the um, owners of, of Coronation Capital and highly, highly inspirational person. I came back to, to South Africa, worked in the bond desk at Coronation Capital for, for a few years and I was approached by NetBank and subsequently RMB to head up their fixed income sale operations and, and I think critically uh, part of that was then writing the South African fixed income daily which probably I became known for in the end and that led to me moving to the buy side. And I had the opportunity then, or was approached by Atlantic Asset Management to, to join them in 2009, specifically to launch an absolute return set of products, which included a hedge fund and a bespoke off-market total return fund, and also to be uh, in charge of, of strategy, um, or head of strategy and research. And they carried on with writing weekly commentary, which is something that we still carry on with today. Eric, please tell us about the genesis of Terebinth Capital and the strategies that you represent. Okay, so Terebinth was launched in 2013 uh, on the back of my view that a sustainable way of, of being a smaller manager in, uh, in a world where it's very much um, operated by, by the largest fund managers is that um, and we've learned subsequently that, that a few allocators are, are also starting to, to move into, into this concept, is that uh, small managers should be looked at as, a, you know, as, a, as an alternative to or latch on a satellite portfolio to a core portfolio. And I was, I was quite passionate about, about that idea, um, rather than be a small manager that tries to become a larger manager and, and go back into corporate. The, the, the easiest move for me was really from the sell side to the buy, buy side and not being part of a corporate en environment anymore. So um, also I think that uh, what made it easy to launch Terebinth was uh, I am very passionate about the asset laws and about the markets um, and I could really you know, implement my views directly um, and build the business to, to my own liking and, and, and ply people in that direction if I, if I, if I can say that. Um, so we started in 2013. I started it um, inside um, a family office um, that was originally um, the, the, the controlling uh, owner of that business. Um, so we were really a single manager inside a family office and subsequently we've had a management buyout. Um, so I'm part owner together with an equity partner that's now diluting two staff. 
it is our view that boutique managers should be uh, manager owned. Um, I think that's what differentiates these type of businesses from, from your larger asset management groups. And uh, also the concept around eating what you kill, I think is something that we feel very passionate about. So starting Terabinth, the whole idea was to start a lean and mean business with the first phase really I would almost say replicating what we did before. So we didn't really want to skip a beat between the previous hedge fund and the previous start return fund to the new business. Um, we had no guarantees that people would follow us. So we could just you know, stick to our graft, um, not be guilty of style drift um, and do things in a scalable um, manner and, uh, and, and, and work on our reputation. Um, we're happy to say that that, that phase one really worked, it, uh, it worked well and it allowed us the opportunity to then bring a alternative to my skill set which was a macro, very much macro top down uh, skill set to bring an alternative or the opposite of that uh, into the business. So Andreas Tindland um, joined us from the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund uh, a few years ago. Uh, he's got a very, very strong quantitative background. He was uh, joint manager of the emerging market portfolio, uh, fixed income portfolio for the Sovereign Wealth Fund for 10 years in New York. Came to settle in Cape Town. His um, trading colleagues in Norway knew me from before, uh, suggested that he speaks to me. Uh, I've got a very similar background to or similar style to his, um, his previous partner in the business also. Um, and um, being so strong on the quantitative side, um, I think uh, the combination of the, of the skill set really worked well to assist us also to, to grow the business um, much quicker during that second phase than we thought it would take. Um, so inside the first three years, then we really managed to, to double the product set from two to four, um, where we are now very comfortable in saying that we are a long only business with the hedge fund the long only part of our business probably makes up um, almost 70 percent of our business um, but we still have the the absolute return hedge fund mindset where the other products benefit greatly from from the hedge fund skill set um, and we can elaborate on that a bit more maybe if you like um, i think also importantly now in the third phase um, of the business development is bringing in further skills also specifically bottom-up skills uh, where you've got analytical ability. Uh, Namati Banamat Shorba joining us from Coronation and Catalyst previously. She's got vast uh, credit um, uh, and cash management experience, but also listed property more recently. Uh, that's a very natural fit for our business. And then with the introduction of uh, Nicole Larish also, who's an industry veteran on the operational side of businesses, you know, having launched the fixed income business at Maitland, um, also being uh, instrumental in the transitioning of funds into the into the uh, um, regulated space in the hedge fund industry, uh, more uh, you know, more recently at Blue Inc. Um, I think we've got a very strong nucleus now to allow us to maybe move to the next phase of our business, which would be to bring in junior talent, um, and also through that um, and um, in partnership with with our equity partner um, assist